my name is Arvind Krishnan, and uh, I'm a manufacturing applications engineer here at Go Engineer. I work out of the Dallas office. A little bit about my background. I have a uh, master's degree in mechanical engineering from North Carolina State University. Here at Go Engineer, I mainly deal with uh, 3D printers and SOLIDWORKS simulation. The purpose of today's webinar, um, this, is, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, our, our goal is to kind of showcase some of the things that that are 3D printed around the office, and uh, um, you know, just show you all some pictures, show you all some use uses for it, and uh, the the uh, overarching goal is to inspire you guys to you know use the 3D printer to come up with your own customized, unique designs to solve everyday problems. So, personal 3D printing. Now, 3D printers have been around for about 30, 35 years now. Previously, it was it was mainly used by uh, by bigger companies, mostly for prototypes, and it was uh, only exclusive to uh, engineers. Whereas uh, now, 3D printing is much more uh, of a personal level. It's it's entered the mainstream, and uh, it's not unique only to engineers and CAD users. CAD users, we have each person with their own unique background, have unique needs. And now they also have access to 3D printers where they can create their own designs that are customized to to what they want, and uh, and you can add a personal touch. So we've shifted from people asking about five years ago or five to ten years ago to hey, what's a, what's a 3D printer? To uh, asking oh, what what are the materials can be can be used, and and what else can we do with a 3D printer? Technology um, this technology has been adopted very well. And uh, there's been great market uh, market growth. The uh, the consumer uh, electronics show in uh, in Las Vegas about two weeks ago showcased a lot of 3D printers around the thousand two thousand dollar price range, which was uh, with with a lot of improving capabilities and a lot of evolving uh, materials as well. So so it was great to see that 3D printing is is empowering. There is before we used to have uh, you know, pictures of our favorite uh, movie characters and things like that. Now we can 3D print them and actually have them in our hands. So, so yeah, it, it's very empowering. We we spoke briefly about CAD skills not being necessary, and uh, you know there are many websites out there like like GraphCAD, um that have a lot of content already. So if I'm working on a on a pet project or something, usually my first step is to go to one of these websites and. And find out, you know, what what models are already there that I could use, and then customize it to my needs. Uh, and only if they don't have anything, would I um, generally go and, and make something by myself. So once again, our most of the examples that we that we look at today are going to revolve around uh, a lot of jigs and fixtures, some uh, legacy parts that uh, don't have OEMs anymore, hard to find parts. Also, things that are customized by by each of the unique uh, person and, and help solve everyday problems. 3D printing parts are usually low volume, so you don't have any mass manufacturing with it. And uh, also, mechanical properties are not of um, the primary concern. Um, so you know, most of the loads that are that these parts are taking are not that heavy. So yeah, mo most of the people around our office, um, you know, have have our unique backgrounds. And uh, we have access to 3D printers, so let's let's go and see what are some of these examples. So the first example is a, a headphone hanger that was made by Jamie, one of our engineers from Salt Lake City. And this is a very simple example with uh, you see a little S with a couple of notches. And here is an example of it being used. Um, where a couple of them were printed, and uh, they are used to hold a headphone. Now this can also be used to hold a, a jacket or a purse. One of the reasons why I like this example and I picked it as the first one was because it, it helps us think in terms of designing a product just for additive manufacturing. You can see that that, that simple S design you have multiple prints and uh, that way we can customize the length between them uh, to suit multiple needs. But also if you're thinking about this being printed in a, uh, in a print bag, instead of having one design, when we have two such designs, or when we have two such parts, we don't have to uh, have them print in the same layer. They can be printed side by side, and hence, 
uh, reduce the usage of support and also uh, a faster build time. Um, we all know that you know printing on the z-axis is is the most time-consuming part. So when we when we print uh, or when we design our parts that are for additive manufacturing, they have a slightly different set of requirements that someone that a designer needs to take into account. Here is another print by William, one of our engineers from Southern California. And it's a very basic towel uh, storage that uh, that has a couple of fasteners that help bolt it to the very top. And here's here's how it looks with a bit, with a very simple towel storage. All right, here's the trinket. Okay, this is um, so. First of all, I got the model of the Mustang from uh, CraftCAD. It was a very simple, simple model, and I made a couple of slight changes. Eventually, had the the logo of um, CHS 2015. So 2015 is the year, and CHS is the high school, which is Creekview High School. This was a trinket for a homecoming mom. Uh, the school's mascot was was a was a Mustang, and uh, you know it was. Uh, I, I gave it to my colleague Diana, who is the office manager here, and uh, she painted it the colors of the local high school and um, she gave it to her daughter who uh, who really enjoyed it uh, she 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 thought it was great so you know simple parts like these that are that can be customized i don't have to do too much work because the majority of the model i get from from online resources all right this next part is by Tyler Reed one of our engineers from Salt Lake City again and this connects a Dyson vacuum on one end and you can see this feature in the middle that's used to clip it to the Dyson vacuum and on the other end um, it connects it to just general shop vac accessories. Now Dyson is a great company and they make amazing vacuum cleaners but some of the accessories are you know are pretty expensive whereas uh, shop vac, um, it's just the general shop vac accessories are going to be much cheaper. So using just a very simple feature that uh, didn't take too long to make, you have this feature that clicks into the hose, and here's here's how the part looks. Uh, this is a very simple print with uh, ABS plastic. A very basic printer was used. Staying on the same uh, range of products, here is one from Drew Davis, who works in the Santa Clara Bay Area facility. It's a vacuum throttle valve that press fitted on both ends. And as you can see, it, it goes in on, on one end, and uh, this, this valve is used to modulate the volume of air that comes in or out from, from that vacuum pump. So once again, you know, very simple application. Again, it's a simple FDM print, and yeah, press fits on both ends, so you, you needed some, measure, some measurements, and, uh, and yeah. All right, here's a CAD design from uh, an engineer in Sacramento, Paul Nishihira, uh, he has a Ducati motorcycle. He maintains most of it by by himself. This motorcycle has a lot of speciality tools. Okay, so he built this one with a 3D printer, such that he can either loosen or or tighten the, the tension of his camshaft. Once again, you can see there's some some fasteners that are being used for for this centerpiece. Some of the dimensions are are important. Um, but at the same time, it's customizable on the other end so that it serves a very specific purpose. All right, this is one of my personal favorites. So the, the Dallas office and then, you know, this particular office space had two people sitting in it where this rent was directly above Nick Grady, one of our application engineers here. And it, it, it used to get pretty hot in the office. So he would, uh, if you turn on the, the air condition, the cold air would directly blow at him, and it was it was pretty frustrating because it, the temperature was still pretty hot, but there would be cold air directly blowing at him where he would need a sweater or something. So he came up with this design, and here's the back end of it, uh, and here's the back end of it, and here's the front where the air would come from the top of the ceiling and uh, it would go through this part and then come out parallel to the to the very top, and hence it would it would go sideways before coming down. And using this little part, this little redistributor, Nick helped uh, keep the air cold in the office itself, but not have direct cold air on him uh, while he was working. 
So, so that was a great benefit. Here's how it looks from the other side where it's closed because you don't want the cold air going to the, win uh, to the window. Uh, you want most of the cold air coming towards the room but still not directly at Skateboard. Tony Riggs from our Houston office made this. Uh, this first print was the one that was used for most of the testing. The green one is, is beautifully painted and it looks so good that uh, they, they rarely use it. They did do some tests on the, on the white printer itself. You can see our kids, uh, some, some kids from the Go Engineer Kids Camp uh, standing on the printer uh, on the skateboard itself to make sure that uh, it looks good. Uh, durability is, is good. And uh, to do the final test, we had uh, Shannon Morgan, one of our one of the people in the office at, at Houston, kind of test it out, make sure it works well, give it, give it a complete nine yards. Here's another one that I got from Thingiverse. This is for all those soccer fans out there, might recognize this instantly. It's a it's a stadium that I had gifted to a couple of my friends. The name of the stadium is called Old Trafford, and it's uh, it's from the football club Manchester United. It meant a lot to my friends, and uh, I had to put in very little work. I, I downloaded this directly off of Thingiverse, and I made some slight changes in the in the print of some of the bottom uh, layers to make sure that it was sturdy. And I did that in inside, and I printed this in a FDM machine. Here's another another cool looking part that marketing uses a lot. It's a low poly Einstein. Sculpture. Now, sculpture is usually very expensive, right? It would have been hard to make something like this from scratch. Well, there was a model on Thingiverse that uh, was a 3D scan of a realistic um, sculpture or realistic structure. And uh, Tyler Reed went ahead and uh, used NetFab to modify the sculpture. So what he did is um, the eyes and the nose and some of the intricate features, he reduced the resolution of the model to about 50%. Whereas some of the hair and the other facial expression of the face and even the neck had a much higher reduction of resolution, close to about 80%, so that uh, to give this a really cool looking feature. Okay, moving on, next example. There's another big, big print from the from the Dallas Houston office uh, where Tony Riggs and Shannon leave their magic on this. It's a dinosaur model with the ball brackets. So you can see some ball brackets here in the back and uh, some screws, uh, some fasteners used to, to mount it to the wall. And here is how it looks in its entirety. It's an ABS print about 14 to 16 feet long. And uh, this goes close to the close to the training, to our training center over there. And yeah, most people are just amazed when they when they walk in to see this. You also see the little uh, skateboards that we have on the side and some some pool balls. Here's, here's Kurt Brown, one of our 3D printing service techs, who is a huge fan of Star Wars and other animation characters. He, so with all these ergonomic and organic models, they're usually very tough to, to sculpt by hand. And uh, most people who have you know, computer images or pictures of these, but, but now we have the capability of doing you know, 3D, uh, 3D models that that you can fill your office space with, and it, it looks really cool as well. Um, you see some uh, amazing characters. You also see some chess pieces there. So, so yeah. Now here is my desk. Uh, I don't have as many parts, but hopefully some of these you'll think uh, look look pretty cool. Here's a gear system uh, that uh, that you can usually spend all day kind of going around and around with it. Here's some pallets for the uh, Conex machine. Uh, we're going to talk about this Vortex Vortex cooler pretty soon. Uh, we have some injection molded polyjet uh, prints that were used with uh, a small plastic polyjet uh, plastic injection molding machine in the back to, to print this part. So so that's there. And also we have some. Um, this is another beautiful print. This is a 3D printed uh, flow trajectory mold. And uh, what this does is it shows you the insides of a uh, globe valve and how the, uh, the velocity changes with respect to where it is in the model itself. There's an end-use part in the back where we needed a lot of insight work. 
to, to modify some of the some of the conditions with respect to getting uh, appropriate rasters and, and filling it appropriate. And finally, this part in the background is uh, a, a spanner that, that, that shows the stress on the on the very insides. Uh, and the, the color the color represents the, the stress levels. Here's another wonderful print. How many times have we, uh, you know, used the mouse where we either forgot the USB print, uh, the, the USB that goes into the computer, or we were short of batteries? Here is a customized case. Um, you know, you can see a logo. You can see specific slots for specific things, right? This print was done by Tandy Banks, who works in our Oklahoma office. He created specific slots. Uh, for having batteries. Uh, this is for a Wacom tablet that he got where the pen that he used for the tablet had a very specific slot that it would go into and he had batteries as well. And if he was doing a presentation then he had a nice little laser as well and a slot for that. He customized it for his own print. The, the orange color represents uh, the colors of his university. And yeah, it was, it was another beautiful print. You know, the, the uniqueness about this print is he got to customize it with his name so that, you know, no one else mistakes it for theirs, maybe. And, and this kind of leads us to a bigger category of uh, where 3D printers are, are very commonly used, which is children fixtures. There, even in the manufacturing floor, maybe, you can create a customized design that can hold a part at a particular orientation so that um, you have someone in the floor working on it and applying, you know, fasteners and all. So we got these new whiteboards in, in most of our facilities where there wasn't a slot for storing you know, erasers and markers and we would often lose them. So, so Tyler Reed went in and he created uh, this little design. He was smart enough to put our logo in there and he had this press fit with one of the, uh, with one of the slots. Right? So he created some slots for keeping markers and the erasers. Here's a picture of it with the, with the board itself and how nicely it just fits onto it. All right, here's the Vortex cooler that I was talking to you earlier about. Now, this is, a, this is an idea that uh, one of my colleagues, Matt Aiton, came up with. And uh, it's, uh, so a Vortex cooler uh, has pressurized air that comes in from the inlet and it spins really fast around this. And because of that spinning, uh, the hot air kind of gets separated to the outsides and comes out from this end, which is the bottom of this image, and the cold air goes out from the, from the other end or comes in from this side. So I did some CFD simulation to um, make sure that my design was good. I needed a couple of iterations, but eventually I got it to work. I did some testing in the back and got it to work. So um, a vortex cooler is often used for cooling of um, manufacturing tooling parts, and, uh, and yeah, this, this is a pretty Pretty nice looking unique design that doesn't need any, any power to run. Here's one, here's another one by Tyler Reed. It's a stopper for one of those sliding doors. It has a stainless steel fastener that can go into it. It's a very simple print again. And uh, basically he can change the position of this stopper and have it you know, shift from left to right. And eventually uh, you, know, you, can, you can stop a door from sliding too much or too little and then prevent maybe dogs or cats or anyone from entering a particular room. All right, here's another one from Drew Davis. He recently moved from Minnesota to, our, uh, to the Bay Area facility and uh, his wife was, was missing home. Uh, so what he did was he created this beautiful little planter that was in the shape of his home state. For this specific example, uh, it was made out of Vito Clear so that you can actually see the inside. Also, uh, it was uh, watertight because of the, the polyjet print. Uh, nice, nice little print there. Once again, you know, this it, it's customized enough where you cannot really buy this in a store unless you go back to Minnesota or something. So another very beautiful print. Here is Gary the robot. Here is, this is a very unique print that our marketing people just uh, completely love. He is, he, there's, a, there's a copy of Gary in most of our, in, in most of our offices, uh, a fully posable one with, with slightly moving joints. And uh, the beauty of, of, some, of something like this is 
we can have them printed in a variety of sizes. For some prints, we can make slight modifications. So here's a really small print on the very left hand side where you, you have one like a Michael Jackson pose. That one is not, uh, you, you cannot move the joints. But the one in the middle, you see a little one there which is about you know, one feet and then this entire big one is about four feet. So it is really scalable. And we also created a female version with some hair, some softer feminized features. So you know, with, with, with 3D printing, you can, with each print, you can change uh, the design makes slight modifications without any additional cost other than the time taken to make those changes. Here's another one from Texas. Uh, Tony Riggs and Shannon Morgan uh, created this huge three-part print, um, which is basically a computer stand. One thing I like about this image that they sent me is it has a bunch of other uh, unique prints as well. You can see there's something to hold a golf ball. There's a 3D printed uh, pen case. You have a rubber-like material, a bunch of different prints inside this one as well. Here's another one by Nick Reddy, uh, another computer stand. This is unique in the fact that it's, it's designed specifically for the, the monitor that it was meant to hold. Once again, very simple print. Because this was in the Z direction, the print took a little bit longer, but simple ABS. It was, it was used to make sure that the, the monitor was in um, this is the same length as, as, as him and the same height. So almost almost wrapping up your last last couple of uh, slides. We've uh, once again Tyler Reed, who's a big car enthusiast, he's he's actually put up a webinar uh, just on automobile parts. He wanted to relocate his his battery from the front engine bay to the trunk. And the problem with that is if the battery dies, it's it's hard to get to get it into the hatch. So he wanted the charging lugs in the front, in the front of the car. So you can see that he created this nice little case with uh, both the positive and negative uh, charging lugs and also a little voltmeter that, uh, that gave him constant feedback. The case was printed with ABS. Once again, you know, very unique part. Uh, used a couple of fasteners as well. Um, and it's something that's unique to just his car as well. Uh, and that's, that's where it sits in. Uh, neatly. Now, you know, if you if you have something like this that that you did or you created for a unique for for some personal use, but uh, if you want to scale it up to a a business uh, or something where you need to manufacture multiple of them, that can be done uh, very seamlessly. Where as long as the time to to make a print is not an issue, you can go from creating one part to many parts and and customize each and every part as well. I, I kind of kept the last one, uh, the best one for the last. Here is a Go Engineer FDM test case. Now, now we visit a lot of customers, and uh, you know we, we like to talk about all the cool tools and possible options inside a uh, an FDM machine. This little this little case was created such that we can carry it around very conveniently. So it, it's the size of an iPad, and it neatly opens up to kind of show the inside. And here are all the different options. So just speaking about some of these options, here is here is a low density, low density fill, a high density fill, a double dent. You have a sawtooth internal pattern that you can do. And all these options are selectable using um, insight. You have a hexagonal pattern. One unique thing about this entire iPad um, case design is it gets fitted into, into place with, with magnets in the four corners. You also have different uh, slice heights um, that, that kind of show you the difference between each one of them. It shows you how easy it is to uh, apply fasteners to FDM prints. And also, if you decide to do some post-processing, you can, you can paint these. You can apply acetone, and, and you can, uh, then, then we take these and, and show them to different people. They can actually feel them, see the difference in the texture, and we can also you know, sand them down. So, you know, in conclusion, uh, we can use 3D printers to solve everyday problems. There are enough service bureaus around us now where um, access to 3D printers is not a problem. It's, it's all about how creative we can get to come up with quick, inexpensive solutions to our everyday problems. 
some of the future projects that I'll be working on would be uh, I want to work I want to experiment more with uh, with magnets and create more end use parts um, that I can personally use for for different uh, problems around my house. So so yeah, with that I'd like to say that you know we have an Instagram page, uh, Twitter, Facebook. So uh, if you want more information to learn more about some of the cool things that we are working on, feel free to visit us here. Once again, this is Arvind Krishnan.